Hello, my apprentice, and welcome to part two of the most amazing things of Star Wars. Of course, we are going over the Seath and the dark side. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Ducks and Download. So as promised, part two. In this one, I'm going to be talking about the Sith, the dark side, and why I believe dark side is not as evil as people may think. Yes, there are sects of the dark side and cults within it that are definitely meant around evil, conquest, slavery, and damnation of those who do not believe in their ways. Much like the Jedi are dogmatic in the light side. But to me, the dark side and the freedom of your broken chains mean something different. Many Sith actually realize this. Darth Malgus, Darth Revan, Tulak Horde, and almost Darth Bane understood that the Sith are more than just evil, conquesting machines bent on domination. That they are about freedom from that which binds you and the ability to use the Force, not cower before it or simply bathe in its water, but to have the power to change the stream of the Force to your bidding to get what you need done. Where many falter, though, is their needs are so selfish that it becomes consumption, it becomes greed, it becomes all-consuming. And that is where they fall to the dark side. That is where truly taken by the darkness. But of course, what is one of the most iconic, most recognizable things about the dark side in the Sith? But the blade. The Crimson Blade is one of the most well-known parts of a Sith warrior or any Sith Lord. Unlike the counterpart of the Jedi, these crystals are no longer canonly found as formations like they were in the Knights of the Old Republic games. Instead, and far more metal, one of the best changes to happen in recent Star Wars, I think, a red lightsaber blade comes from taking the lightsaber of a Jedi or another Force user, finding that kyber crystal, using pure dark side energy, to bleed and crack and torture the crystal to a point where it unleashes an even more ferocious power level and becomes a red blade. And they usually are way basier, and to me, sound much cooler. Now, of course, I say bleed, torture, pouring hate into something to, you know, create something else. Yes, the dark side does use dark, more brutal emotions because they are the most powerful. They do not have to be used in that order. You do not have to always resort to anger or lust or greed, but you can if you need to or if that is the fuel for that fire at the moment. It can lead people to lash out, but if you are more in control of yourself, you wouldn't do that regardless. But look at Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. No one batted an eye at Obi-Wan Kenobi for taking his revenge and destroying Darth Maul for killing his master. He was a bad guy. It's allowed. The Jedi are totally allowed to kill if it's a bad guy and for plot reasons. It's a movie. Understand that at the end of the day. But still, to talk about it and have some fun, let's get into the fact that the Sith aren't all bad guys. Truly, a good quote to think of is, the path to hell is paved with gold bricks of good intention. Yes, many Sith are only trying to create order and stop things that destroyed their own lives, usually at the loss of a loved one, the murder of a child or someone that was close to them, planetary bombardment, things like that are what feed many of these new dark side users who tried to create the order that they could not have. It of course does not always go good and there is corruption. Sadly though, that is what always happened. Even with the Jedi themselves, it just took longer. But in the end, they did become far more corrupt and full of their image versus their needs and their actual orders quest, or I should say their orders goals, really switched on them. The Jedi Order also really flipped when they went away from following the Force and being more of a monastic order to a sanitary squad, a hit squad, an assassin squad through the Clone Wars that would have continued. In the New Republic, they're going to be working with the Republic. For some reason, the Jedi just cannot distance themselves from a governing body. And that's what will slowly kill them. That is their poison. The Sith poison, though, is, yes, backstabbing. So let's talk about that subject. The problem that Bane solved to create the rule of two is that many weak Sith could gang up on a stronger Sith and kill him. Then that would continue and continue until eventually the Sith Lords that were in play were so weak that the dark side had been more or less neutered. He says that a poison loses its potency when you drip it between 
hundreds of cups instead of just concentrating it into one. I think where he's forgetting the fact though is the dark side is the ultimate poison. It is the ultimate power. It is, it takes you from a five to a 10 just with enough anger and hate or enough pure raw need of what you have to get done. To me, the dark side and the Sith are like a grinding wheel on a sword. Perfect with the right angle, right pressure, and a little bit of knowledge that creates the sharpest tool ever. But like a poison, it's not that it's one vial dripped into a cup and then spread. We don't do it that way. No, you have one part of poison that you drip into the hundred cups. The poison, shall I say venom, is the dark side. Now the analogy makes it sound worse than it is, but that's just because that's the, those are of course are the people who mostly embody the dark side are the villains because it is plot. That is the story. They make great villains. But Bane had it wrrong there. And he goes off of studying through Revan, especially if you read the Bane Trilogy, another book series I highly recommend. He studies through Revan and thinks that when Revan said one master and one apprentice, he meant that's it. No, Revan still, from being in the Old Republic, spoke of a moment where there should be one master and one apprentice per Sith Lord. That would stop them being able to gang up and kill a master because they would have different masters to kill and one of them would surely be able to see what's coming and maybe band up with the other masters, create, you know, putting it into this little group of rebellious young acolytes. One master, one apprentice, but hundreds of masters. The Sith still needed to be strong and many to counteract the Jedi, or they would have to do what Bane and the further Sith did by hiding in the shadows. Now, of course, hiding in the shadows and striking from the most unknown or most unsuspecting of places with the most unsuspecting of people that you have bought out or bribed is truly a great tactic. But when there's only two of you, how could you be stronger? The old Sith were, of course, the strongest. They had the most Sith alchemy, the best Sith magic, uh, the ability to create massive illusions and have battle meditation. That was all lost. Why? Because of the rule of two. Because so much knowledge was destroyed on Rusan by the Thought Bomb, or whatever is going to be the canon version of what takes the Sith from thousands to two. Those two do not study all of the Sith, and those who do covet some of that power because they need their apprentice to themselves covet and have greed after what the master knows. But if the master refuses to share that before the apprentice can become physically or mentally strong enough to kill the master, then it's lost. Who knows how many amazing secrets or tombs or holocrons buried away by ancient Sith lords like Tenebris or Plagueis were lost in time because their apprentice completely and utterly destroyed them in a moment of weakness. Palpatine is not a good Sith Lord. He killed his master after an attack when he was extremely drunk. That's not a good time. That's exactly what Bane was afraid of. Weak Sith attacking and finding opportune moments. Not a good one-on-one -on -one fight, not fair at all. Palpatine is the worst example of the rule of two and why the rule of two definitely needs to cease and we need to get back to the old Sith Empire. A great, powerful few Dark Lords, and then of course, the Emperor and the true Sith Lords. The Dark Council, or those who embody the true essence of the darkness for those to covet that position, try to fight after it. Now, some people say that's easy, but it's not, because once you get to those positions of power, once you are that high in an esteemed empire like that, you have enough lackeys and people who will work under your boot, especially those with no force powers who could not ever stand a chance against you. That gives you the chance to fend off the 12 initiates attacking you at once. So the new Sith Order should take a little bit of Bane, a little bit of Revan, and a lot of Marco Ragnos, Ajunta Paul, Naga Sato, these old Sith with far more power, study far more of the old ways, find the old temples, destroy the Jedi Temple now that Coruscant was abandoned to the gangs after the First Order, and take down the Jedi Temple re-showing the original Sith temple built on the Nexus atop the mountain in Coruscant. That is where a storyline I think really needs to go. And it's an amazing idea to have more Sith. Because then again, that just creates far more of a ease to write against villains and to create new heroes and continue the story going, which we know that's what Disney wants to do. It's, it's just cash opportunity. Do Old Republic, fan service, and a lot of things can be made from there. The Old Republic is definitely the best era, and I am so happy you guys stuck around to listen to me ramble about my two most favorite things in all of Star Wars. Thank you all so much. Do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So enjoy the rest of your day, and may the Force serve you well.